Okay, everybody, thank you. Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Developments in Digital Dentistry 3D Printing Solutions. We sincerely thank you for taking the time to be here with us today and to sit in on this presentation. Just a few introductions. I'm Aaron Rue, the Dental Lead Specialist for Go Engineer. I have nearly 20 years of dental lab, uh, dental laboratory industry experience. Super happy to be part of the Go Engineer team. We have Richard Cromwell, He's out of our Michigan office. He is our applications engineer there. I don't know if you have your background where we can see the printers, but Richard has a variety of printers that he works with, does benchmarking for customers, really digs deep into the technologies as well as the softwares that drive those printers. Then we have Ryad Mescud from Canada. He is our liaison and our account manager for our Canadian customers to the north. And hopefully he can start, he can join us. We may have Brian Allen from Stratasys. Brian is the dental business manager for the Eastern region. So just a quick overview of today's webinar. We'll do a brief overview of Go Engineer as well as our presence with Riot in our uh, Canadian office. And then we're gonna dip, deep, do a, a deep dive into 3D printing specific to digital dentistry and dental laboratory applications. A few housekeeping items. We'll be running a couple polling questions, which I'll pop up here in a couple minutes, uh, just to kind of get a temperature check. When I do launch those, you'll see those hit the screen and you just can select the answers and um, we'll see your responses. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So there should be on the right-hand side of your screen in the taskbar, you should see a questions tab. If you open that up, you can type in the question, hit enter, and that will be sent to us and we'll be able to answer those questions at the end. And if you missed anything, we're doing a recording of this webinar. Um, my colleague Kayla in marketing is gonna send out an on-demand recording so that will become available to you. So again, thank you for taking the time. Appreciate everyone's time out of your day to spend with us and hopping on this presentation. I'm gonna hand it off to my colleagues, Riot and Richard, thank you. Thank you, Aaron. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, first things first, I know for those of you, sorry, for those of you who are new to us as a company, the first question you'll have is, who is Go Engineer? Well, Go Engineer is the full solutions provider with collaboration and partnership with our customers as a core value in everything we do. We have over 35 years experience and thousands of customers in high tech, medical, dental, machine design, uh, you know, energy and a whole host of other industries. We have over 30,000 SolidWorks users across America and we're a diamond Stratasys reseller. We have trusted partners in software and hardware such as Creaform, Materialize, Postprocess and Velo. And our customers, uh, we provide our customers with a full end-to-end -end solution for all their digital manufacturing needs. If you could go next slide, please. So our headquarters are in Salt Lake City, Utah, and we have over 40 regional offices across the United States. Uh, we have over 150 certified technicians. And now through our acquisition of Proto 3000 Stratasys space, we're happy to announce that we've expanded into Canada. Through myself and a rapidly growing team, we hope to provide our Canadian customers the same level of expertise and service that Go Engineer is known for in the States. Next slide, please. So we have a whole range of tools to help serve us service our customers from our technical team, who is just a phone call away or available through email to SolidWorks training through our popular YouTube channel, with over 23 million views and counting. Uh, we also have a service bureau arm to get you parts quickly or to supplement your in-house printing. Uh, Go Engineer is committed to providing your business the best level of service and support as quickly as possible. And with that, I'll take it over to uh, Richard to start with their digital dentistry program. Hello, everybody. Uh Richard Cromwell here. I'm the Additive Manufacturing Applications Engineer in Auburn Hills, Michigan, uh, just 20 miles north of Detroit. And um, I 
thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us and uh, dive into this topic. Uh, before we get uh, straight into 3D printing, uh, it may be helpful to first define a few terms and identify a handful of important challenges that the dental industry faces um, that 3D printing is actually poised to help resolve. So first off, just in case uh, somebody's watching this that isn't a dentist, we have digital dentistry refers to the use of dental technologies or devices that incorporate digital or computer controlled components to carry out dental procedures rather than using mechanical or electronic tools. So think like, uh, you know, intraoral scanners and stuff that take the actual um, images of the inside of the mouth, the topography, and then translate that into the digital realm so that those files can be manipulated and ultimately export it as a physical product um, via 3D printing. So why is additive manufacturing and digital dentistry important? We know that a, when a business adopts digital, digital dentistry practices, it yields tremendous benefits across a range of modalities. So let us briefly examine the benefits tied directly to the use of incorporating additive manufacturing uh, into your digital dentistry workflow. So one of the problems that uh, is, is happening in the industry today is that there's a shortage of skilled workers. Now, you know, this is uh, turned into a big problem because of, of COVID and, and, you know, the, the great resignation. However, it's an even bigger problem when it comes to highly skilled labor um, and, and, and finding the people that are, have the aptitude and the ability and the desire to want to do these types of jobs anymore. Um, and a professional grade 3D printer uh, like uh, a J5 allows for the rapid creation of dental devices that would formerly require dedicated rooms of highly skilled technicians with specialized tooling and uh, expensive equipment. So challenge two is the high and growing demand for dental uh, prosthesis. As we watch the demographics in, in North America change and you know the baby boomers are getting older, there is a lot of opportunity here for, um, for new procedures to take place and new types of, of devices to become uh, prevalent. So a single professional grade 3D printer can create a broad spectrum of dental solutions for a range of conditions. 3D printing can also help you to better communicate the goals of your treatment to the patient, resulting in a higher level of case acceptance. You know, it's, it's one thing to show somebody, you know, what their uh, mandible looks like on a, on a screen, but it's a totally different one if you can make a clear, um, high-resolution version and, and to actually point out what type of deficiencies or um, diseases are present and what course of action you're going to take to fix it. Uh, finally, uh, patients are subject to time constraints created by the rising ex expectations in the workplace, and it limits their ability to undergo dental procedures. So the utilization of 3D printing in-house allows for a drastic reduction in lead times in getting products and services to the patient. For example, 3D printing enables dentists to seat crowns and bridges in a matter of minutes, minimizing chair time and allowing more patients to be seen in a day. So let's dive uh, into the fundamentals of additive manufacturing technology and how it relates to digital dentistry. So while there are many 3D printers and many different manufacturers and they're all using a plethora of different acronyms to convey their core technologies and how they work, in reality, there are only seven different process categories um, or types of additive manufacturing. Now, such a simplification, though, can be never really be comprehensive. And given the dynamic development of innovative technologies, you know, things are always changing. But it is important to note that not all of these additive technologies are suitable for use in the dental laboratory or practice. If we view the AM process categories through the lens of dental applications, we see the list pared down to three. So we have vat polymerization, powder bed fusion, and material jetting. Now let's um, step laterally for a second and look at uh, the Go Engineer additive manufacturing portfolio. And this slide, you know, kind of says a lot. So it talks about the cost of the systems, the complexity of the deployment of the technology. And typically when we're, you know, working in the, uh, Go Engineer has helped for decades. We've, we've helped thousands of companies of all sizes acquire and adopt the best AM solutions available. And uh, 
currently, I, I basically, to make it kind of understandable, I divide them into prototyping, production, and metal. But if we shift over and once again, look at our uh, added manufacturing portfolio through the lens of digital dentistry, uh, it gets pared down to, once again, three different um, categories. So we have polyjet, which is material jetting. We have P3, which is programmable photopolymerization. That is a type of DLP um, uh, system. It's a VAT polymerization. And then uh, we have metal printing. Um, and in these categories, you know, we have different machines, um, classifications. The J5 Denajet and the J700, J720, these are dental-specific machines created by Stratasys. Um, then we also have the Origin 1 Dental, which is the DLP system. And then we have the Exact Metal, which is an affordable um, selective laser sintering metal printer. So regardless, though, of what technology you are utilizing, doesn't matter if you're doing um, the polyjet or if you're doing metal, it's, the workflow is essentially the same. Uh, it all starts with creating a 3D model, um, and you can see the intraoral scanner here, processing and slicing the model in software, okay, 3D printing the actual physical product layer by layer, and then AM technology specific post processing. So the way that you post process or remove support material from say like a polyjet model is different than how you would do it obviously on a metal system. But the fact is either way, there's gonna be some type of post processing involved. So I don't know, do you, uh, do you guys want me to talk about metal AM technology applications and go through these slides? Or Aaron, did you wanna talk about this at all? Um, if you want to go through it, Richard, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, so uh, metal AM technology applications in digital dentistry. This, is, uh, this is, was an exciting um, opportunity to find some dental models and send it to our lab in Salt Lake City and have some things printed out. And it was really great. Richard, we can go through it together, too, if, if you want yeah, me to dive in. Yeah, if you please, want me to you... dive into any more specific to that. But, uh, yeah, so... 3D metal printing, I used to work for a company where we were starting to get into that maybe 10 or so years ago, and it's revolutionized. So Exact Metal is now on the market. We're a distributor partner of theirs. Very affordable printer, very accurate, very fast. So the two main applications would be crown and bridge copings, bridge work, um, and then also removable partial dentures. A lot of laboratories are looking into this solution for their removable partial denture framework. We know from an analog perspective how laborious it is from hand waxing, duplicating models to investing, casting, divesting, all of that. This brings you to a full metal output. Yes, there are some post-processing steps to be done, but much less from your conventional um, RPD production that you would traditionally do the conventional method. If you want to go to the next slide. Well, that's the only metal slide I have okay. other than yeah. uh, just other than talking briefly about the machine. Sure. Yeah. Super small footprint. So real estate and dental labs, as we know, is a premium. So it's always good to have something that stands more vertical. So the footprint is probably maybe two and a half, maybe three foot square. Uh, large build platform you saw in that previous picture, six inch by six inch square almost. Uh, in terms of powders, it is validated with Bago powders. So Bago, world-renowned dental company based out of Germany, but uh, really pioneered in the removable partial denture uh, workflows and products, as well as the crown and bridge. This unit does come in two different options. So you get a single laser or a dual laser. The dual laser will be much faster than the single laser. Both are great, but for dental applications, we may want to look at the, the speed since um, you know we're up to time constraints, patients are taking time off from work, things of that nature. Anything you want to add to that, Richard? No, but I will. The only thing I will say when I see this machine is that the footprint is incredibly small. Anytime I've ever dealt with metal printers in the past, they were rather gargantuan. And so this is this is a, a really neat, um, really neat system. And I was glad our lab was able to produce some parts on it. That's fantastic. Okay. Well, well, let's move along. 
we have uh, polyjet AN technology. We're going away from metal. We're going to go into polymers. And we're going to talk about the technology and applications for polyjet and digital dentistry. Now, a lot of you may have uh, experience with uh, some of the um, legacy systems that Stratus has used to create. And I want to show you uh, some of the neat things that they've been able to come out with lately, um, including the J5 Dentajet um, platform. So let's get started here. So if you don't know what Polyjet is, uh, Polyjet 3D printers can utilize either a traditional Cartesian gantry system or a rotational polar axis. Now the J5 Dentajet uh, and all of the um, Polyjet systems use specialized piezoelectric heads that jet microscopic droplets of UV curable photopolymer resin simultaneously and directly onto the build tray. Polyjet can quickly print extremely lifelike models with complex and intricate geometry as well as full color. So if we're going to look at some applications um, in implantology, uh, you're, with Polyjet systems, you're able to simplify the complexity of implantology and maximize production. You can print opaque and rigid implant models, biocompatible and transparent surgical guides, and soft gingiva masks, all on one tray in a single unattended print job. You can print as many as 41 implant cases per day with only two J5 Denajet trays. You can, hear, you can see this um, guide is printed in Stratasys biocompatible Med610. Yeah, go ahead. I think... Um... I think Brian from Stratus, this is on. I don't know if he was trying to share something, but we may dive into a little bit about that uh, that quantified number of 41 because Stratus is coming out with some high speed updates. So yeah. um, that that 41 number is today, but tomorrow, quote unquote, is right. going to be much higher. That's awesome. Yeah, I think good. Is is Brian? Is yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I'm here. The um... I don't know if you want to see my picture, but uh, yeah, so with the J5 series, uh, Stratasys is, is increasing the, uh, the ability of the printer uh, via software. And uh, come late Q2, uh, we are going to have a, another setting in the, in the printer uh, called high quality, high speed. And what it's going to do is what you see on the uh, previous screen it will be printing in half the time with no drop in quality of the print. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, so depending on your work schedule, if you're working eight hours a day or 12 hours a day, uh, we can start running or running the numbers and really upping the total production that the J5 can do. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I already... I already think these printers are pretty darn fast, so making them even faster is incredible. That's, that's terrific. Thanks. Well, Thanks. Faster without losing the accuracy. Without losing quality. Yeah, that's right. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, terrific. Okay, well, that's uh, that's uh, hot news. You know, that's a fresh tape. So um, anyway, back. we'll talk about this little part here that we printed. It's uh, printed in a biocompatible Med 610 material which is uh, certified for the oral uh, environment for a short duration. Specifically, it's like 24 hours of uh, mucosal membrane contact. The hole accepts either a metal sleeve that is glued into the guide, or uh, you can uh, use a dental drill and guides uh, with a, the sleeve. Or a predetermined hole is 3D printed and used with a drill-guided sleeve that fits on the dental drill and guides a clinician to the location and depth of the desired implant placement which you can kind of see is happening in the other picture. Okay, so now let's go on to orthodontics. Using Polyjet for orthodontics cuts days off the delivery times and produces more accurate and comfortable and effective orthodontic devices. Uh, you're, you're able to simplify the production of acrylic orthodontic devices with the separator DM, which is what they're showing in this video, which coats models easing the separation of the acrylic device from the model and making the removal of wax and acrylic residues easy, reducing manual labor and resulting in better surface finish. Uh, 3D printing, indirect bonding trays or produce full color study models. Richard, if you just stay on this, that slide real quick, yeah. that previous yeah. one. 
I just want to hit home on this separator DM. This is the Achilles heel of all, well, I don't want to say all, a lot of the 3D printed models in the market. Acrylic just loves these models, right? So if you're doing a salt and pepper technique, collar retainers, that type of thing, the acrylic is just going to instantly bond. You can't get it off. But this separator DM is, it's just that outer layer of that model that it's creating a mixture of the model material with the support material and the acrylic does not bond. So this is huge for, for ortho applications in terms of just labor, time, efficiencies of the production. Uh, that separator DM is big. Awesome. Okay, that's great. So other uh, examples of things that could be printed for orthodontics are appliances like we just saw with the acrylic retainers and or clear aligners can easily be uh, efficiently fabricated. This is an Oscar angled appliance and 3D printing the models provides the ease and ability to fabricate an arch expander with buccal wire in order to maintain anterior position. A Herbst appliance. Uh, and I like the, the look of this. That's a pretty outstanding model. The appliance is used to correct the anterior to posterior relationship, the maxillary mandibular jaw, a relationship that can be established correctly and easily with digitization and 3D printing. And RPE appliance, digital dentistry and 3D printing allows for shortened appointments frequency when fabricating an arch expander. Prostodontics. This is a neat video. Uh, Polyjet technology provides speed, precision, and customiz customization that outperforms traditional dentistry in this, in this realm. Um, fixed or removable dentures manufactured by 3D printing are clinically acceptable and have physical properties comparable to conventionally fabricated dentures. And uh, this workflow allows you to replace traditional hand wax-ups and automate the process of cast chrome partials, significantly reducing manual labor. Is any want to add anything to that one? No, I think just bringing your your again to the point of a conventionally made removable partial denture fra denture framework. Um, the biggest expense a, a dental laboratory has is labor, and if we can streamline that through digital design to digital production, um, yes, you still have to go to the invest and cast. But with these parts, they're super accurate. Um, you know, those clasps are going to sit around those teeth, the major connectors, all of that. So uh, this is another great solution to digitize your RPD workflow. Well, that's terrific. Thanks. Okay. So a 3D printer uh, is, there's, you know, you have to look at the materials that are involved, but just as important uh, to the materials, the technology is going to be the software. And what's great about Polyjet Systems is they use uh, GrabCAD Print, which is Stratasys' proprietary um, uh, build preparation and slicing software. Um, so it's easy to use software. It's, the, it's a very um, uh, friendly interface and there's very minimal training required. I, I don't, I think you can pick it up pretty quickly if you, especially if you're uh, have any type of uh, CAD knowledge, it's really easy. Um, it allows you to increase production and significantly reduce print times with automatic tray arrangement. And it works great. Calculates the time and material resources needed for production before printing. And it's, unlike a lot of systems out there, uh, GrabCAD Print is super accurate, I got to say. Uh, schedule and monitor print jobs re remotely. Um, I launched the print over there from my kitchen table this morning. And sends an automatic alert when the job is printing and complete right to your cell phone. So you'll know if, you know, when a job is done and you can go over there and get it off the printer, get another one started. Um, this is important. GrabCAD Print does a really, really excellent job at correcting files. There's no need to put it in third-party software if you have um, a model that has um, inverse normals or over intersecting surfaces or something like that. And finally, can be used across the fleet of Stratasys dental printers for scalability and complete production control. And it's really easy to manage uh, multiple systems, even multiple technologies using GrabCAD. So we have three flavors, as I mentioned before, of dental-specific 
3D printers. The J5 Denajet, which is built upon the same platform as the J55 behind me here, um, but specifically tailored uh, both from a materials perspective and software for the dental industry. Um, it's a high volume. It can turn out a lot of parts very quickly. And apparently, according to our friend's earlier statements, it's going to be even faster now. Uh, there's five model materials that you can load simultaneously. If you, I don't know if you can see down there, but this is where you load the material base. It has a little handy uh, shelf here for help you when you're removing parts. Um, it has a really, uh, for its footprint, it has a huge build volume. Um, and it's because of that uh, uh, polar axis that it's able to do this. Uh, it has uh, 1,174 cubic centimeters. And it uses um, SUP11, which is a water, it's not water soluble, but you blast it off with a water jet um, uh, for the support matrix. Now, moving over to the J720, this is built upon the very successful J750 um, platform. Uh, but it, again, it's been tailored specifically for dental applications. Um, it has six model uh, materials available, and they're larger um, containers. These are only 1.1 1 .1, uh, kilos. Those are around four kilos. It's a slight, you know, it's, it is a bigger build volume at uh, over, it's 1,911 cubic centimeters. It has two different support materials, a water re jet removable kind, as well as just a water soluble kind. Um, so that can actually reduce uh, labor quite a bit too. And then the final version is a very specialized solution. It's the J700. Um, it can really only print uh, two materials as well as the support. And it is specifically engineered for the mass production of clear aligners. Clear aligner models. Just so everybody knows. <laughs> right. The holy grail is a printable clear aligner. But this is a, a workhorse for pumping out models for clear aligner production. Excellent. Okay. Now we're going to move away from uh, Polyjet and talk about the exciting new Origin One uh, system. So this is a totally different animal than Polyjet. It is a VAT polymerization system. And so let's look at the technology real quick. Uh, Origin One Dental is powered by the leading edge programmable photopolymerization, P3 technology, which achieves unrivaled accuracy, consistency, and detail. And if we, if we follow the signal flow um, on, on our uh, picture here, it projects uh, the entire image, all the entire layer, all at once. It's not like a, if you see other um, uh, VAT polymerization systems like stereolithography that shoot a laser down and then trace the vectors and rasters on a, uh, on a layer on the top of a pool of uh, resin. This is quite different. It's projecting the entire layer at once. So this becomes very quick, right? And, and it's almost as though... Uh, well, it really is. Your, your build speed is not based on geometry other than the z-axis. So it's a very consistent um, system when it comes to in terms of, of timing. So we follow the signal flow. It, sh it shoots the um, image of the layer through a lens onto a DMD, which is a special type of mirrored device system. And then it broadcasts that up to the underside of a, um, like it's like a clear... Uh, vat where you have your resin and it's a very simple system there's not it's, it's there's not a lot of moving parts it's really just the z activator that is the actuator that is moving but what makes um the origin one different than any other dlp system out there is the way that it has a pneumatic separation mechanism and so that's one of the tricks of making this type of 3d printer work is getting the model to unstick from that membrane that it was printed on so that you can move up to the next layer. And a lot of force is generated on very green, uh, by that I mean like newly printed material. And so uh, there's a high propensity for breakage and failure. And th the way that this system works, that is mitigated significantly. And so finally you're able to get fast print times, exceptional surface quality, um, much better isotropy than, and, than we're used to seeing in 3D printed products. Handle, uh, can, it can handle diverse geometries from uh, solid molds to delicate features. And unlike a lot of other DLP systems out there that are using two-part resins, um, 
we have a really high green strength for our parts, um, which means less post-processing and, and minimal warpage in the end. So here's some uh, models that were printed on a uh, Origin 1 dental system. Here's an occlusal appliance, night garden splint with model. You can see uh, that this was printed on a DLP system. If you look closely at down here at these ridges, that's, uh, those, those are the nubs for the support. So that's an, it, it, I, I usually file those off. Um, here's an implant guide, uh, implant model with surgical guide. This was printed in Key Guide, which is strong, fully biocompatible, and easy to polish, autoclavable material. And here's full arch models, quadrant models, uh, removable dies. The key attributes of the Origin One dental machine is that it uses certified materials to support dental applications. It has the lowest cost per part and highest throughput yield. So it has a very fast ROI and uh, superior accuracy and mechanical properties um, over a lot of other uh, additive manufacturing technologies or systems. The Origin One Dental Workflow does not presently use um, GrabCAD Print as its uh, build preparation and slicing software, but that is going to be something that uh, is going to happen soon. I know uh, where it is, it's going to happen this year. Um, so presently, you have to set up your builds at NetFab, which is, you know, a great piece of software as well. Uh, save it as a single STL file, load it onto a web app, set the parameters, send a printer, and then walk up to your printer and press start. This is, it's a very cool looking machine. Um, here's a list of the materials for dental applications. Keystone Key Splint Soft and Keystone Key Guide. It's a relatively small system, too. Yeah, go ahead. So, Richard, just real quick, just uh, just know, everybody, that it is it does have three applications at this point. Like Richard shared, dental models, splints and guides with the key splint from uh, Keystone, uh, biocompatible surgical guides with the key guide from Keystone. But just know that Stratasys is working every day to expand that portfolio. So today there's three, tomorrow four, so on and so forth. Keystone is becoming an industry uh, staple in the industry for additive manufacturing resins being an open source system. So I know that Stratasys is working on opening that up to their full array of, uh, of printable resins. So, uh, so just know that that's being worked on and we'll have a, a full portfolio to offer. Oh, that's terrific. Um, one of the things that I really like about uh, the dental, the Origin One system, um, is that it has uh, a very quick uh, post processing. You just remove the parts from the printer, put them in a sonic IPA bath for four minutes, and then uh, use UV. There's like a UV curing cabinet that uh, you can put it in for 12 to 15 minutes and usually cures everything to full strength. Yeah, depending it's, it's, on the appliance, it could be less. Uh, but yeah, you know, maximum would be 15 minutes. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps up my portion of the, uh, the afternoon. If anybody has any questions that they want to type into chat or the question box, please feel free to do so. I don't see any questions. Brian, are you still on? Not sure if he's on. Um, well, we don't see any questions, but uh, it's been a pleasure being with you all today. Sincerely appreciate your time. Thank you so much. We're hopeful that you learned more about the innovations in 3D printing, the transformation of going analog to digital um, through 3D printing technologies such as Stratasys. Just know that Richard, myself, the team are working hard on building these educational series of programs. I kind of say this is like a 50,000 foot view of the 3D printing technologies uh, within di digital dentistry that we offer here at Go Engineer and Stratasys and Exact Metal. Um, we're building this educational platform. So just keep an eye out for future webinars coming down the pipe. I think we'll have one specific to the J5. We'll have one specific to the Origin One, to the Exact Metal printers. So we're building that up. 
and looking forward to re-engaging with you and kind of sharing a little bit more about the story. Um, again, thank you. Please know that Richard, myself, Ryad, and Brian are here. You see a few of our emails and contact information. So if anything pops up, hey, Brian, there we go. Um, did you want to share, I know we're kind of at the closing, but did you want to share any other any other updates Stratasys has uh, on the roadmap that you want to you want to share about? I know we touched about the high speed. Anything else you want to you want to throw in there? You might be on mute. Um, yeah, with the origin being an open source platform, uh, we're constantly validating uh, additional uh, DLP materials. So uh, we're probably at you know two to four a month. So uh, you'll probably get um, uh, some notices, or at least on our website, as we validate uh, different materials, uh, they'll be added as an icon on the Origin One. So um, as those materials come out and we validate them and we add them, uh, that'll be new information. Uh, the other big one, uh, like I said, uh, that is near term is the high quality, high speed mode for the J5, which will be out, uh, we're expecting sometime in June of this year. So we're really excited about that one because that will definitely be a game changer. Yeah, that's huge. And uh, having it, you know, I'd say we're on like the 20 yard line, right? So we're almost there. June is just a blink away. So I'm super excited for that. Absolutely. Um, and then everybody, please know Riot's here for our Canadian base, you know, our Canadian customers. Just leverage Riot. He's here to help. He's here to serve and support you. So uh, so don't hesitate to reach out to Riot up there, up in Canada. But we're all available. We want to help you. We want to be an extension of your lab. And um, anything we can do to help support you, feel free to reach out. And we'll look forward to circling up. We'll send a recording out on this webinar, and we'll do some follow-ups. Thank you, Riot. Do you want to share anything at the end? Uh, I think you covered it all. Uh, again, you know, Aaron and I, you know, Aaron's a great resource as well in the, the dental industry. He has a lot of experience, and uh, Brian as well with Stratasys there. And we're all here for anything you may need. Perfect. And Richard, thank you for, for everything you did. I know it was a thank lot you. of work putting this together, so we applaud you for all the hard work and dedication you did. Thank you thank so you. much. And Brian, thank you. It's good to have great partners like Stratasys behind us as well. We can't do it alone. We need great partners. So appreciate everybody's Bye -bye. time. Have a good rest of the day. And we'll catch up soon. Thank you.